Hello and welcome to the Astrocast. Uh, we are back again after a bit of a hiatus. Basically, I didn't have the motivation to edit the podcast, but uh, now I have Feth, who is willing to edit this for me. So, say hello, Feth. Hello. And we are also joined by Mattaspore. Hello. So, the, the, the brief audio order of service for uh, this week is we'll be having a quick chat about what we've been doing hobby-wise, and... Then we'll be going to the Decadence and Decay preview, what we thought, and that'll be the show. So, uh, Matterspore, have you been doing anything this week? Oh, this will be surprising. The answer is not nothing. Dear God. Not, not a great deal. Not a great, yeah, I know. Not a great deal, and it's not very exciting. I got some boxes of Scourges that I haven't put together for a very long time, but there's a new Drukhari book coming out, so I thought I probably should. So I did. I haven't done anything with them. I haven't even painted them yet, but they're there. Hey, built is a good start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's normally the start and end, as far as I'm <laughs> concerned, but yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Theft, have you been up to much? Not a huge amount this week. I've been repopulating my glass cabinet and slowly filling that up with all the miniatures that we want on display. Catastrophically losing a game with Necrons to Wife Space Wolves, because... Yeah, Space Wolves are scary in ninth. Uh, beyond that, not a huge amount. I've been continuing chipping away at random fantasy stuff. I decided I wanted to repaint my engineer from Reichland colours to Uldorf colours. So I painted someone in Uldorf, and I preferred it much more to my Reichland. I'm not repainting all my Reichland to Uldorf, but I, I enjoyed that. Besides that, I've played some games. Nice. Against myself, using the Heroes of the Hinterland rules they published in White Dwarf this uh, this month. I'm still getting a feel for it, but I'm impressed by what I've played with so far. It's very basic and probably would be better with a GM to kind of control the adversaries. I don't quite have enough Ghosty Boys to properly play. Anything more than with just a couple of heroes. But yeah, I've enjoyed it so far. You just kind of mm. keep going until all the heroes are dead. So which is not... The most... Um, As is right and proper. <laughs> yeah. It, you only lose in the end. <laughs> it kind of, kind of feels like there's not actually like a way to win. Well, not kind of, Brad, yeah. now, now you know how every single player of Dwarf Fortress has ever felt. <laughs> Very right. true. I've played about three games so far. The first one was playing as a knight in Cantor from the Stormcast, just because I had the model. The first game I lost spectacularly because I couldn't get any spells off because I kept not being able to roll the dice I needed and got ganked by ghosts. As you do. Even though, you know, chain ghasts aren't that scary on their own, when that you're getting them surrounded you and you've only got so many attacks to beat them down, you kind of lose through attrition. However, the second game, I got my spirit storm off on turn two which dish deals one mortal wound to each, each unit within 18 inches of the caster. Now, when you're fighting three Maya Worm Banshees, each of their own individual unit, and a small pack of chain ghasts, it goes from, this is a bit scary, to, I've killed half the enemy team. Um, <laughs> and then I, I, I decided to try one more game with the dwarf mini I made for Dark Mouse's Stag Do. I got Brokey out um, and played him as a dwarf bar ranger from the Legacy Rules. And he won again. Well, he'd better. He doesn't have the ability to roll low. He did miss. Um, yeah, when we played the D&D game for, for Dark Mouse's stats, I basically... 12. Like a... 12. <laughs> I counted. He rolled a 20 on a D20 12 fucking times. And I, I, I now, my, that character now has a, um, a beer-making golem. Yes, yes, he does. So, oh, I should totally get another Jacob Bugminson model and make that into the golem. Yes. Yes, you should. Yes. Because that would actually work really well. Um, okay. You'll, you'll find out what we're talking about and what game this happened in in a later edition. Yeah, he, he did all right. So it's not just uh, modern characters seem to be working well. Legacy characters seem to work. And I did think about maybe mixing in the Anvil of Apotheosis rules from the previous General's Handbook, which was the character creation stuff, and seeing if you can cool do some cool bits and make it into a kind of a, a lightweight RPG dungeon crawler. Currently, it's had the idea, and I've not actually expanded it much more beyond that because I want to get to grips with the, the basic 
the actual rules are written before I start tinkering. And I haven't actually had any bo boss battles yet. I don't have any scary ghosts. But yeah, that's it. The, the only other thing I'd, I'd say hobby-wise I've done is I finally pulled the trigger and bought myself a 3D printer. Well, I actually ended up buying two because I've been waiting for the Elgu Saturn for months and months and months. And finally went, you know what? I'm just going to buy two smaller printers rather than one big printer. So I now have a, an Elgu Mars Pro 2 arriving when they're released and an Ender 5, which will be arriving this week. So I can print filament and resin. It's very cool. Um, kind of started down it when I, I... I came across a few Kickstarters. So Hexton yeah. Hills, which basically... It is the Mighty Empires tiles from way back when. I'll put a link in the show notes for people who don't know what Mighty Empires are and Hexen Hill. But yeah, basically it's modular hexagons where you can build up a fantasy kingdom and they're designed for role-playing. So that's that's the, the map you can explore in your role-playing game or as a map to conquer in a war game. And that then spiralled into backing the Skies of Sordana, which is a ridiculous Kickstarter. It's an arcano-punk setting with airships Go from some, you know, nice small ones, which are about nine, ten, maybe twelve inches long, to two which are over a meter long at scale with fully modelled interiors. Well, I will have eighteen airships and ninety-five minis to print. I think the number keeps going up. Very good Kickstarter, oh, dear. but that's possibly a talk for another time when I've actually printed some. Something we possibly could mention is that we've all been playing a bit of D and D as well. We throwing you all into a horrifying post-apocalypse and failing to scare you with the jump-scare, angry, scary little girl with tentacles. Yeah, well, I was kind of playing a kind of, bit, not quite bitter ex-soldier, but kind of a been there, seen it, I've dealt with Lovecraftian horrors, so... <laughs> I think the captain was too busy like trying to read the computer screen to, to really care, and so, then she ran away. So... Yeah. Yeah. That, that might be a problem for future. Um, yeah, probably, but that's the DM's problem. Yeah, again, more to follow on that as we play and may talk about what happens next session. So, the main event for this episode is the Decadence and Decay preview. It's got my boys in it. Yeah. It has got your boys in it. So, shall we, we'll start at the top and we'll get to your boys when they, when they appear. Okay. Um, rust to Rust. So, this is a new campaign setting for one of the 40,000. My concern is we're getting back to bloat. Literal bloat, because this is Nurgle. Very true. <laughs> um, it, it, we've just had a new edition. It, it's not even like every faction has their codex out yet. Yeah. If this was in two years' time and we had a full roster of ninth edition codexes, excellent. But, yeah. I mean, cam campaign settings were all well and good, and it's always great to see new places, new settings, yeah. and everything else. But I remember the Third Ed rulebook where it had all of the different basic worlds you could play on and mm. the tables you could roll on to put out terrain and features. And, like, you know, just as an example, roll a d6, you roll a six, there's a blizzard on an ice world that had X effects on the game. But that was just in the core book. And there was a lot of that. See, I, I didn't actually pick up the previous one, uh, Warzone Pariah. Um, but my understanding of that was there was no um, how can I say it? faction upgrades. There was no kind of it, there, there was campaign. There was rules for campaigning in that setting, yeah. but it was more if you were running a campaign in that setting. So White Dwarf has this new Flashpoint series where they're talking about campaigns, and that has a, a two pages of rules for the Ar Aragovi system. Yeah. And again, it's campaign rules for for digging up Xenotech. Really cool, and some Crusade missions to uh, to fill it to include. Now, as, as something for a GM to throw into a campaign and say we're going to be using this, that's fine. But I don't want this to be. If I'm going to go down to Dark Sphere and have a casual game, I need <laughs> to bring another book. Yeah. Can I just say it feels very, very strange to consider the need for a GM for a, a Warhammer-based game. I mean, yes. Road Trader required a GM. Well, recommended well, a GM. Yeah. But... yeah. I mean, oh, it's just odd. I've got no problem with having a GM. Like, I remember there was a White Dwarf article maybe five, six years ago 
where they talked about the joy of having a games master running your individual games of 40k and someone who can manage the world events, manage, you know, victory points, all that kind of stuff. It's a nice yeah. experience. It's like luxury 40k. It, it is. It, it's... Uh... So when I, when, I, when, I, when I say um, games master, I suppose I'm more mean like an arbiter in a campaign. Um, yeah. Again, the, the, well, back, the, back at school, yeah, as it were. Yeah. So the the <laughs> the teacher who ran the warmer club for my last few years, he started doing campaigns for us where he would have really basic a system app, steal some pictures from Google Images, and you know say, "All oh, right, well, okay, so choose a bit of a planet," and you know yeah. he had bits where a warp storm would come in and block trans- transit between two systems or you had to roll to try and conquer through it, or that a person to handle that side of the campaign. If you're doing a narrative yeah. campaign, having a like a G- GM for a, a role playing game, yeah. even if you don't need one to manage each individual session. So basically, me. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you. Um, and then, okay, so we've got the book, and then we've got a, a mission pack. What? concerns me also is it says there's more than just background in an epic war zone here. The book also includes new rules for Death Guard, Admet, Imperial Knights and Drakari. We don't have a current gen or current edition codex for Admet or Knights yet. The Drakari mm. one hasn't dropped yet. So. It's, it's a bit like um, mm. I got really annoyed with Psychic Awakening book two. Uh, is it mm. Faith and Fury? When yes. they dropped, and there was so much marine stuff, and it was a month or two after the marine codex had dropped, yes. and I was like, "All of this should have been in the the, the marine codex." Yeah. Um, but that's just what we've got to deal with. Annoyingly, well, that 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 rings the uh, all all for money mm. bell, doesn't yeah. it? Um, it because bit. what what it sounds like with especially with stuff like this Caradon Warzone and all that stuff, um, essentially, and, and, and you're talking about bloat and everything. It's the antithesis of uh, the need for a GM because this sort of stuff is basically to eradicate the homebrew uh, mm-hmm. and make you pay for what you're substituting for it. It does remove the need for a GM, which is useful for games like this because, well. There might only be two of you. And, you know, it is a lot of work to ask someone to do. So there, there are pros and cons to it. Yes. I know. <laughs> it's what it is, I suppose, the only way of saying it. I think it's specifically for people who you say, there's two of you, you want to run a narrative campaign between you. And that's all you know, well and good if you're not that experienced in setting stuff up. But for people like us, not to sound too up ourselves, but we are experienced players who can write a narrative campaign quite easily. Oh, well, the old guard, don't you know? Yes. Oh, oh don't use that word. I don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not in my 30s yet. I'm not, I'm not happy to be in the old guard. Oh, yeah. oh I know too bad I've, for I, you. I, I am. I, 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 I know I've spent most of this week painting sick edition fantasy, and therefore I've got a certain odd image going on. But, can you, you know, feel the neck beard spouting? There's a new Drukari Codex, and I'm happy because they're mine. It's mine. I, although I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the artwork on the front of it. it doesn't yeah, really have the. Not quite as evocative as the no. previous codices have been. I think that's kind of. I've noticed that with a lot of the Ninth Edition Codexes. It's too thing. safe. Mm, I yeah. don't like it. It's Drukari. They are the opposite of safe. They seem to be going away from uh, the previous generation of codexes. There was the one central figure looking badass. Yeah. yeah. And there was a few other pieces around it. I think, yeah, that was a better way of doing it, because here you've got more of the battle, and it's less of Jakari being evil. I yeah, think you, you, just... you, yeah you, you lose focus on what's supposed to be the central figure, and to be honest, the central figure looks very much like she can't be asked. I mean, it is 2020. The apathy is strong. <laughs> The thing is, and I'm gonna. Oh God, I can't believe I'm saying this. This is this, this feels dirty to even say, but she's clearly meant to be a witch cult member. Yeah. The fuck is she wearing? Too much for a witch cult member, but yeah. I feel dirty. I feel yeah. dirty and wrong, but I have the models, and the models tell me what she should be wearing. I mean, is she is she definitely witch cult, or is she just a cabalite? Um, 
who likes her knives. Well, unless things have changed a very great deal, Cabalites don't have the option to go pure melee. They've got to be at least yes, a splinter yes, pistol but, uh, in there. And plus, Cabalite nor- normally wear those helmets. You can see a Cabalite in the background firing a splinter rifle. Oh, no, sorry, I speak wrong. That is not a splinter rifle, that's a shredder. But... I would say that armor looks very similar. Actually, yeah, it does, but they've kind of... Could she be an Archon or kind of a, a hero character? More than... She could be an Archon, that is true. She could that be would an make Archon. Sense for the, to be the central figure of the, the... Perhaps. We will see. I'm going to have to actually get the book and open it and find out. The sentence below it says it makes the Drukhari faster and deadlier than ever before. I have my doubts, because the fastest and deadliest they've ever been was Generation 4, the one where you could get a charge first turn, like, easily. And Overwatch didn't exist. I'm just going to throw it out there. There's no skulls on this book. My God, you're right. Oh, no, 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 you're wrong. You're wrong. If you look at the top of her head, the there is a one, skull. Tiny yeah. little thing. So there is a there. skull. And in fact, I think there is a skull pierced on the back spike of the one just to the right of her. Yeah, I'm seeing at least two skulls. We're all fine. Okay, there are skulls. We're all right. We're all right. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. (laughs) Well, the reason I bring this up is because back when I used to run the Warhammer Club in high school, there was a kid who wanted to play Dark Eldar, as they were back then. Mm. And his mother said no because of the sheer number of skulls on the front of the codex. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> I dread to think what would have happened if she'd seen a Slanesh Codex. I really dread to think what would have happened if she'd seen a Slanesh Codex. Yeah, that's 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 a very edgy codex. Um, edgy probably should be in um, quotation marks there. Go and watch Snipe and Wibbs coverage of Codex Eldar from 3rd edition for more details, because they do it better than we could, so... Yes, yes. Yeah. That's not our job. Our job is to bitch about what might be coming. I mean, I'm trying to be a little bit more hopeful than just pure <laughs> bitching, you know. Well, that's all right. That's your job. It's not mine. So <laughs> one thing I will give credit for in ninth is it feels a lot killier than 8th did. Like the extra damage on weapons, the extra like nastiness, um, extra shots. Like my heavy bolter retributions, my sisters, are scary. Like, yeah, they've gone from being kind of middle ground to oh shit. And I can believe that these guys have more attacks under the night because everything has more attacks under the night. Mm. Yeah, well, they've only they've only bragged, they've only given us a stat block for the incubi, which yeah. is great because the incubi are one of the few dark elder units that I've never used. <laughs> so that's great, that's useful. <laughs> Thank you. But they did get a new model in Psychic Awakening, so mm. it's yeah. not unsurprising that's the, the... Yeah, no, that's fair. I mean, what it promises, like you said, more attacks, higher damage, lethal combat output across the board, and uh, the stabbiest of the Eldaria are about to get stabbier. Someone needs to suffer for that sentence, but I like the uh, I like the message behind it. So... I mean, suffering and Dark Eldar, that, that, that works. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. I suppose... It basically, it's it's basically bragging about being able to take a mix and match thing without suffering the command point penalties that you would have before, which is nice. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna have to read it to know for sure because again, they're they're mostly bragging about the incubi in what little we've got here, and I don't intend to have incubi because I don't like them. But that's all right. I will wait and see. And if the improvements that the Incubi got are similar to the improvements everyone else got, I doubt I'll have much to complain about. So, going from one person's army to another. Take us away, Feth. I've got the Codex for my boys, which is nice to have an update. Although, just quickly before we go into this, I am somewhat annoyed that we've gone back to Codex supplements as opposed to full-blown Codexes for actions. Just because... Jesus Christ, guys, I don't want to have to buy the Space Marine cards. I'm one of these people that doesn't really like vanilla Marines, and just to have to buy it just to get the rules for like basic pack squads and everything else. I you know Is there is there any other group that has the kind of like codex supplements for all the different parts of it, or is it literally just It's only Marines at this point, and I think yeah. it's an effort to try and in some ways, I get it because it's now easy. from a managing the rules perspective, it means they just need to FAQ one book to c- cover all the vanilla stuff. 
rather than have to say, oh, this also applies to the, the Dark Angels and the Blood Angels, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Space Wolves, I think it's a bit weird they got a supplement just because they are so radically different. Yeah. Dark Angels and Blood Angels, I'm kind of fine with them. Again, Death Watch are a weird one. But at the same time, it shouldn't really require very much. I mean, how much space does a stat block take up? You'd maybe have to print two pages worth of the standard marine stuff. You don't have to write all the mar- all the you know cannon fluffy bits again. I don't know. Have you seen how much how much is in the? There's quite a lot in the in the vanilla, vanilla marine codex because we've got yeah. quite a lot at this point. I, I think marines you can make the justification. It, it's yeah. a bit of a shame, but other fa- I'd say it's a shame other factions don't have a codex supplement. It would be nice for the guard to have codex supplements to go into more depth on specific regiments. I feel like uh, heretic Astartes might benefit from being done this way. If they yeah, do it this way. But like but heretic again, Astartes, I think would yeah, I, I would put them above the guard in deserving supplements. I think yeah. the four cults. So, um, word, but, sons, well, noise marines. Yeah, yeah. So Empress children, thousand sons, death guard, and world eaters should have a separate book just because they're so different. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would be more than happy for Iron Warriors, Night Lords, Word Bearers to get a Codex supplement and flush yeah. them out and maybe give them a character. But I mean, the ideal would be if you're going to do that, then just do a supplement per Primark. Hmm. Yeah. There you go. They're, they're, all, they're all supposed to be unique and different and all that fun stuff, yeah. so why not? I mean, to be fair, I probably won't need much in the way of the codex because I play a pure Deathwing box. But I imagine there will be enough special rules in the vanilla codex that I'll do that build upon. Which is why they need to get Battleforge up and running on the app. But that's a whole other kettle of fish. If their app works, then the codex bloke becomes a lot less of an issue. Uh, so just going through the stuff, um, looks interesting enough. I like the yeah. interrogation. Yeah, I like that too. That's yeah, very that's... fluffy. Well, it's the nice, it's that sweet, sweet moment where Fluff and Crunch interact. Because yeah. you need an interrogated chaplain and you need a Deathwing librarian. And you grind oh. the popcorn into the carpet. This metaphor got away from me. I don't think we're going to I also like the fact that Deathwing Vanguard detachments and Ravenwood uh, outright detachments they both get obsec now, so they're actually feasible as your primary detachment rather mm. than having to take a small number of green wings just to hold objectives while you're actually killing with big dudes. Mm. Slightly positive, aside yeah. from you know bitching about supplements. But again, I only bitch about supplements because I came in in third ed and had to buy the supplements for Dark Angels way back then. Yes, when it cost a whole four pounds, I believe the Dark Angel supplement. Yes, yeah. But, but what I remember it? those days. When main codexes only yeah. cost eight quid, sometimes less if they weren't especially thick. Yeah. Uh, Four pounds was a lot of money at twelve years old. I'm not going to lie. That's that's that, that's a fair <laughs> point. Fair point, well made. I mean, I just played vanilla marines, so so you had to pay the whole eight pounds. I had to pay the whole eight pounds. Well, unfortunately, you see, I am a reader, so I had to buy them all. <laughs> Which, if I did that now. In fact, as yeah. I did do that now, costs a couple of hundred quid. Yeah. Back then, I did it for 50. Going on to the next topic, Necromunda, I bought all the books up to, uh, before they started doing the House of Books, mm. and that was 100 quid from Goblin. And that was with a 20%, 20% off. Nice stuff for 40k. There wasn't a lot, but I don't think anyone was expecting too much. Yeah. yeah. Necromunda. I've never played this game. <laughs> I probably should one day. Um, I've I, I tried to get involved oh. in a campaign locally with Dark Mouse, and I played one game against him. But because I've been terrible at arranging games, he may have steamrolled me a little bit because <sighs> I was just playing with my basic uh, basic life. I do have some enforcers because I did buy um my my my, my well Christmas money last year went towards Dark Uprising, yeah. so I have that sat up there, and I so I have the Grinder Cult and the enforcers. And I cool. like the idea of playing jackbooted space cops. You judge dread coming through a bit there. Yeah, just a bit. Uh, again, Vansars, I, I I used to like Vansars. I'm not 
overly keen on their new aesthetic, I'll be honest. I actually, I like the model. They don't scream gothic grimdark to me. Mm. If I'm honest, I would use them for a post-apocalyptic, I don't know, D20 modern goons or something like that. If, if well, the reason they've got a higher level of tech is canonically they have an STC. Oh, it is a broken one. Yeah, and it is leaking radiation. That's why they have to wear all the life support gears, and that's why they are physically weaker because they're irradiated. But that's why their tech is is better. They have access oh. to a working STC, oh. which they don't tell anyone about because hopefully obvious reasons. Yes, because yes, <laughs> the mechanic would not be impressed. They were basically. Be a Titan knocking on their door going, give. So the new models, what have we got? Archaeotex and Neotex. Not for me, but I do think they're cool. Like I said, I don't think they fit with 40k aesthetic, but I do like No? Are, are you sure? Because I'll be perfectly honest, looking at these, there's a there's a very um Necron. Ah, sorry. Mm. I, should, um, I should clarify. Appearance they there. With the Imperial 40k They're not aesthetic. Imperial. No, but they're, they're not Imperial. Yeah, so they, they, this could They're very well to be, be um, closer they to They look, because look at those things that the Neotechs are riding on. Does that or does that not look ever so slightly like the bottom bit of a destroyer? Valid point. I would also say this is probably closer to what Dark Age of Technology humans were walking around in. This well, is it, our... it, it was. If, if they're yeah. making it from an STC, then it was. Um, this is far more advanced tech than basically anyone else in the Imperium has. Realistic outside like those of those goddamn monkeys. Yeah, I like the um, I like the design. Not enough that I want to get these people, mm. but I get what's behind it, fluff wise. Right. Um. So I was talking Death Maidens. Um. Death Maidens. I said Death Maidens are Eshes who've been brought back to the dead. So I'm wondering whether we'll see Van Sar who have been uploaded into machine bodies when they die. That would be cool. That would be very cool. I mean, you have to get the book and read it. Um, um, we've already got one people who can bring their fighters back from the dead. Do we really need a second? Would that diminish Death Maiden's uniqueness? Cool. Desecrate so... diachasm. <gasps> so this is exciting. As you guys haven't played Underworlds, have you? I have not. I'm no. tempted to pick up um, either the Caradron or the Stormcast. I get paid. Amy and I play this quite a lot. It's a really good... So, everyone here's played X-Wing, right? Yes. No. Ah, okay. Well, it is the simplicity of X-Wing and the kind of draw of Magic the Gathering with putting together the right deck to use at the right time. It's highly addictive. It's the best of three games, and if you know what you're doing, you can play three games in an hour. No. It's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I've not got onto playing it. I, I would like to give it a go. Um, what the bits that's drawn to me about the whole Underworld is the war bands they've done. They've just been so yeah. creative. And yeah, as much as the stuff we're going to talk about after them is cool, I actually think these are the best model reveals of the day. They're great Chaos Warriors. They're very much oh, yeah. as they were. The fact that it's got a nice 50 50 gender split is cool. And I love the Slambo one. I mean, he's not Slambo, but he's got a strong Slambo vibe. <laughs> I was going to say, he feels like Slambo. Something that isn't in this preview, but did drop this week, is rules to mix and match through the different Grand Alliances in Underworlds. So uh, say you want to take, I don't know, one of these guys, and I don't know, the leader from the Zinch Arcanites, or you know, something like that. You can mix and match now, and you can build a deck accordingly. Went for the Godsworn. Fantasy oh yeah, warriors. That's mm. that's yeah. Cool. So yeah, again, I, I I think these are really good models. Um, I kind of wish we could get a forty k equivalent of this because the creativity we had. Oh god, yes. Was to his war band or trader, and that's just the real aspect. You know, they have a really cool Eldari craft. Um, oh, Asari. Harlequin strike teams. Harlequin strike team. I was That's what Harlequins you, do. I was thinking you could have a really cool war band of different aspect ones. Yeah. Yeah. Could work really well and might mean some aspect so they don't have to use the second one. Mm. Yeah. Just, yeah really, Wouldn't really that be cool. nice? <laughs> I mean, again, someone who's slowly working on the second edition army because I have too many. Oh. 
I think that's where Underworlds and, to a lesser extent, Warcry really shine, is mm -hmm. they can show off little ideas that you wouldn't want a whole army of, but you yeah. would want, you know, just a few models from just to be cool. Fully on board with you, that. Again, yeah, really, really nice models. Um, I probably won't pick them up because I don't do Slaves to Darkness. Yeah, I don't even normally care too much about models, but I can tell that they're very pretty. Oh, so, I have been kind of maybe you need to get a second fantasy army. Maybe get a opposing fantasy army so I can do demo games. And Slaves to yeah. Darkness is probably Lords of Chaos are probably the easiest one to do. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, from a model still existing. Um, unless, well, well, bar the Hell Cannon, but I'm... I'm yeah, I'm, but you could convert one of those up if you wanted I to. I could, and, and, and I've just got a metal steam tank. I don't need to get anything as well. Right, so, final reveal of the preview. Um, uh, Path to Excess. We it's have the pretty slanish, boy. Slanish mortal followers. Age of Sigma. And yes, we have the pretty boy. This is a happy thing. Now, um, Sigvald the Magnificent, or David Bowie as he's known in this house, had a model, I think it was last updated 15, 20 years ago, possibly, because it was metal and then it was fine cast. But now, if you scroll up, he has a stunning reimagining in plastic. But this is just a really, really cool model. He is a very, very pretty boy. I mean, just the dynamism in that movement. Like, he is, he's got the etheric wind flowing around him, his capes all billowing, golden locks in the breeze, like a sword that actually matches his stature. I like this. I like this model. <laughs> it is very good. Um, it's very slanish. It's very ornate. He's very beautiful. He, he yeah. is slanish. He, he works really well as a slanish character. Super pretty and elegant and nice. And there's clearly something wrong with him. There's also the potential of converting him to Fulgrim or Sanguinius. Although, I think as Kirioff pointed out today, um, to convert him into Demon Fulgrim with Marathi is about 300. Sure. Going to casually cough and then mention your printer and then cough again. <laughs> I, see, I, I think ah, maybe an episode it begins. On 3, maybe an episode on three D printing um, needs to needs to happen. But my kind of final thought yeah. is, I, I don't really approve of just printing off a predator. You know, if it's, no, if it's, God it, no. I'll keep my powder dry and we'll, we'll do an episode. But yeah, no, a conversion kit for him. Damn such. We should probably point out how he met his end, though, in the old world. Because it we're got into peed the old world on here. by a troll. <laughs> <laughs> he, he got his head kicked in by a troll <laughs> and then pissed on. That is fantastic and so fitting for that kind of character. Yeah. Brilliant. Because he, he is not a nice person. We should stress this. Well, no, it's, it, it's always been like. It's it's the outer shell hiding the you know the empty rot inside, isn't it? It's, it's all about that yeah blind blinding beauty. He's almost like oh god, it's it's freaking like old English fairy tales, isn't it? You want to throw a handful of iron nails at him and tell him to be gone. You flipping. He's got a he's got a glamour. Uh, yeah, yeah, but as we have discussed, he is in fact the fairy king. So <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the goblin yeah. king even. Sorry. Sorry, detail about me for anyone who wants to know it. Probably nobody. I like like old English folklore and stuff. And so when I say mm -hmm. fairies, I'm not talking about fucking Tinkerbell. Across the Spirits podcast. Uh, so Spirits is a drunken dive into mythology, legends, and lore. It's fantastic. It's these two lasses from. It's it's well worth listening to, um, and they 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 try and do less mainstream stuff. So they'll cover stuff um, on like Indonesian folklore. It, they have done some stuff on traditional English folklore. Their podcast is quite good. And they also did an episode on how the Legends of King Arthur is self-insert fan fiction. Oh, yeah. Yep. Go and listen to their episode for that's, more details. That's um, right. pretty, yeah. 
<laughs> go, going back to um, but yeah yeah go, going back to the pretty horned boy here he is a horny boy yes um he's fant- yeah he's fantastic i age of sigmar's models are blowing out of the park consistently oh yeah um i think that's the joy of blowing up the old world is you can actually bring back interesting new stuff and reimagine people who have come back well, it's like if 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 they died at any point, their soul is out there, so yank it back in. It's all good. Which I I guess is why because you showed me on that link a while ago. Right? I guess that's why Heinrich Kemmler was back. Balthazar Gold Gelt. Yeah. The patrician of uh, the Gold yes. Lord. The he, the former the former head wizard guy. Yeah. He is back as a stormcast Lord Arcanum. I'm Excellent. sure there's there is it's one of these weird Martian mods. He's got a very similar name. He is, is in fact in the Soul Wars novel, if I remember That's correctly. I've, I've listened to Soul Wars, and he's the main character of Soul Wars. Cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, it Which, is. Worth a listen. That was the first Age of Sigmar book I've actually listened to. Yeah, that's a solid listen. It does a lot of good to flesh things out. <laughs> yeah, it certainly makes me appreciate Stormcast as a, as a faction, rather than just being goldy space marines with bigger hammers. Um, but go back yeah. and listen to a, our Age of Sigmar episode. So it's not it's not just him. It's there's a whole army book's worth of dodgy Slaneshi people, including these monstrosities. And I am saying that's oh, a good thing. Yeah, I I do like they almost look like with with how almost kind of thin and and almost almost graceful mm. they look. They they almost have like the old high elf model feel. But mm. then they've got yeah. the massive spikes, and the shield's got a mouth, and there's a huge hook on the end of the sword. So and it's one just thought like, oh, I did ha- just have. So I was looking through some old old law um, from second, and chaos Eldar is a thing. Mm. So you could totally convert these to chaos Eldar, like as a weird slanish worse. Just cult. thinking to put a pin in that because originally in the law, Marathi was a slaneshi cultist. Back in back before it was retconned, and don't forget we've seen in Warcry um, elves that have turned to chaos worship it in its kind of undivided form. Certainly, the Splintered Fang War Band have elves in. Also, Slanesh kind of ate all the souls of the elves when the world ended. It's not necessarily been stated explicitly, but it's not unreasonable to assume some of them may have Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, that's that could be quite. A... Dear GW, if you are actually listening to this podcast and. Firstly, why are you listening to this podcast? Um, there are better. That's uh, possibly not a bad idea to develop. Um, I like it. But no, these ones are really good. And I think the, the concern always with Slanesh is they go to down the sex, sexualization route. Yeah, they haven't really yeah. done that here, have they? No, it's, you, it's Slanesh. Even, yeah. Very, very Slanesh, but it's not... Well, it's like, it's it's what, if, if you... God, I remember reading, I think it's maybe the... Fourth Horus Heresy book, the one with the mm. Empress children come falling down. Where mm, what originally great. get yeah, what originally gets him isn't like there's nothing sexual about it. So sex, sex is a part of it, certainly. Uh mm. but to start with it's just the sheer kind of beauty, stimulation mm. and all that crap that gets you yeah. in the first place. And these guys are all about that. They mm. are very pretty. They are so pretty and golden and shiny and nice, and then you realise that the shield has a fucking mouth. Yeah. yeah, it's something I've said about the Greater Demon model when it was re-released mm. uh, well over a year ago now. It's mm. sexual, but it's not sexualized, if that makes mm. sense. Like, it's sinewy, it's predatory, it's lithe, it's... It has like... suspenders attached to its flesh. <laughs> oh no, its flesh becomes suspenders that connects to it. But it's subtle. It's not like the old demonette models, which were just boobs. Yeah, it's not just tits in your face. It's more than that. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's got some subtlety about it, and I think Slash works. Yeah, Slash can work with the whole. It's going to get loud now, but yes. I think the, yeah. there is definitely sp- scope for a more subtle Slash worship. That's what you said about oh. um, Maffy in the Storm of Chaos expansion. Six, actually, it's sixth edition. Sixth edition Warhammer Fantasy. There was the you can play a dark Eldar, a dark elf cult of pleasure list, 
which was um, Dark Elves, Dark Eldar, and Chaos dedicated Ooh. to Selenium. That's cool. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and dig out the list for you. Send that. Uh, yes, Maspo, you were going to have a, cool. have a have a wee have a wee rant. It's sort of it's sort of like another thing of people focusing on on one aspect, I guess. Mm. Of of Slanesh. and what one of it was the whole sexual thing where every model had to have at least one somewhere, uh, or indeed that lovely this quiet offense Slanesh, and all that, all that fun stuff where it's blaring loud. But yeah, to go back to like the subtlety, one of the best things to convert Slanesh to is is a drug. It's a drug. It's a drug that gives you a tremendous high and doesn't seem to have any side effects, and then you keep using it. You know how that song and dance. You you start off being given lovely shiny armor and a lovely sword, and then, then to be then... fair, they've they've still got the lovely shiny armor and the lovely sword. It's just yeah. now their their apartment their their body is a is a timeshare. Yeah. Um, yeah, and some of these look frankly monstrous in exactly the right way. Yeah, I I kind of want all of them. I mean, this is definitely a face face only a mother could. Uh, the one with the flail and the sword and yeah, oh yeah, that's yeah. uh, <laughs> Hi. that's that's yeah, that's a lot of them look quite. So the lead looks relatively. I assume he's the leader. He's got the weird mirror on his back. Whippy McGee yeah. again <laughs> has, got, has got the has got the facey bit. Part demonette with the large salad prongs. Um, well, it's, again, it's the claw. It's the yeah. claw. It's, it's it meant claw. to be the big demonette claw, isn't it? But yeah. she doesn't have one, so she's got the prongs instead. Again, that that looks relatively well. Maybe not normal. Maybe under bad disco lighting. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm not entirely certain this one could pass uh, for normal. The um, next one, no, <laughs> though, not with the tongue spikes and the and the huge the t- horn. Yeah, and the t- and the huge yeah. horn as well. Yes, that's it's a bit of a clue. Yeah, and then we've got the face only. Um, not even a mother. Um, yeah. mother would rip her own eyes out. They are very good models. And who was the character they got released um, in the box set recently? Nutcracker boot dude. Yeah, I, it worked very well with those. Is it still on the site? It is. Hang on, I can link you guys. Shadow and Pain is the box, and it is a Lord of Pain. That that makes complete sense. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that Which, that. with those spiky boots. He looks like something out of the 70s, and I'm completely there for that. He does look opulent, but also fucking brutal. And actually, they fit in quite well with the Hellstriders looking now, because I kind of forget they exist. Yeah, I think they're from 8th edition. I think they were originally I think so. Um, I, I yeah, because Slanesh my... got a big re-release um, late in fantasy. I mean, I could go back and check my my fantasy census, but I haven't got there. Really, really. Um, yeah, I think Slanesh was certainly the highlight of this preview. Yes, I think the the highlight is definitely the Slanesh stuff, which is fair enough. HK has had this year. Police have got had new Necrons, which are fantastically creepy. Oh um, yes, and obviously Marines had to get their uh, appreciation cake. And we finally got a Tech yeah. Marine. Finally, I've been asking for a Tech Marine for years. Any closing thoughts? On the- I thought this one was solid. I think there wasn't anything huge and stand out, but the Slanesh stuff was definitely good. I am disturbingly hopeful about the uh, upcoming Gary Codex. I very much like the looks of pretty much all that, which is a positive. I don't remember feeling yeah. that way about some of the. So yeah, all in all, and you'll very rarely hear these words come out of my mouth. All in all, that's pretty good. Yeah, no, I think I think it's a good preview and some cool stuff coming. Obviously, we have our niggles, but then we're, we're weirdos on the we're, internet. We've got to have. Things. We're old at this point. We're we're allowed to complain. I'm still in my twenties. I'm not accepting my. I'm old yet. I've still got. <laughs> I've, still, I've still got eighteen months. Um. So Janus. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that is the inevitable march of time. Um, uh, well, yeah. I could still go to a night. I won't because they're horrifying. I could. <laughs> well, you can't right now, but yeah. No, I can't. I can't. I can't yeah, right I was going to say. Right. 
so that, that I hope you've enjoyed this episode. So full disclosure, this episode is actually after the episode here next week because we thought it was best to do something relevant than something clever. So next next time we'll be discussing random old rules we found in White Dwarfs and Codexes. We're going to try and be a bit more frequent with recording as we now have a editing monkey. Hello. Uh, if you have any thoughts, feedback, suggestions, uh, let us know via the Tinker Tailor Soldier Sponge website. We also have a Twitter, Facebook, and an Instagram, that kind of stuff. My God, how I'll far include, we've fallen. I'll include links in the doobly-doo if you want to tweet at me. If you enjoyed this, we have a Patreon that goes to support all the shows on Tinker Tailor Soldier Sponge. The episode, the show I will say definitely go and listen to on Tinker Tailor Soldier Sponge is Unparliamentary Language. If you okay, Rob and Will, great job of breaking down political news in a nice, digestible, and you know, everyone has their biases, but they do try and present an unbiased view. Um, so, yeah, there is other shows on the network. Go and take them out. Uh, stay safe. Wash your hands. That's a good night from me. And me. And me. Good night. Join Tom and Rob for your essential fortnightly dip into the world of British and American politics. We read all the boring stuff, so you don't have to. And I also like to think that our kind of characteristic banter adds to the show. Uh, I ask Rob most of the questions and Rob provides the insights, don't you, Rob? Yes, I do, and I just tend to witter on and 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 on over you, but that's fine, because people listen to it for me.